how to make the best of a bad situation, how to just, you know, stay positive, you know, reframe your negatives into positives. Things might not always be great for you, but, you know, be grateful that you woke up this morning. How many people didn't wake up this morning? You know, even if you woke up on a concrete bench, if you woke up on the ground, if you woke up in an ice house on a mattress, you still woke up this morning. So I like to encourage people to really to master their mindset you know, master your mindset, master your life. Because if you're sitting in the corner all the time crying, poor, poor, pitiful me, I need this, I need that. People aren't going to want to help you. They're not going to want to be your friend. And then you're going to be crying. I don't have any friends. I want people to not worry so much about what other people are thinking about them. And I want them to live the life that, you know, they want to live. It doesn't matter how old they are, how young they are. Live the life of your dreams. Live the life that you want to live. And don't live the life that other people think that, you know, you should live. Don't worry about what's going on in your circumstances. If you have a lot of money, if you don't have a lot of money, if you have a family or if you're totally by yourself, just, you know, do what you want to do and work on your own self and make sure you are the best person you can be. All right, Miss Bonnie, welcome to the Mindset Master Podcast. How are you today? I'm doing great, Tony. I'm happy Wednesday. I'm glad to be here. Happy New Year to everybody. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. And happy New Year to you also. And another thing, Miss Bonnie, I want to also uh, thank you for being a part of the uh, Mindset Mastery Collective. I seen when you joined the group. So thank you so much for that right there. It really means the world to me. No, no worries. I'm glad to be in your group. Thank you very much for inviting me there, Tony. You're very welcome. Now, where are you from? I am in um, Celebration, Florida, which is a very close to Walt Disney World. So I get to see a lot of people from all over the world come. And I get to talk to them about, you know, how to have an awesome Disney World vacation. I love it. So is that what you do? Like you, you help people with their vacations? No, not really. I am a women's empowerment coach. And what I do is I empower midlife women to say bon voyage to shackles of their mind so they can live their best life and reclaim their joy and passion. I also am a vision board expert. And I like to just, you know, have people live a better life and, and be happy and look forward to the future. So I love that, Miss Bonnie. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. And how can I help you today? You know, Tony, probably the best way you can help me is I know you are a mindset master. And I also am, I do a lot of work on the mindset. I would like to kind of know the best way for me to help other people to master their mindset. Let them know how to be, you know, live their live their best life and just, you know, be the, the best version of themselves. What's the, like the best way for me to help others in that capacity? Okay, that's a really good question, Miss Bonnie. Have you ever thought about uh, making uh, courses so that way you can help people that way? with like an online digital course? Have you ever considered anything like that? Um, yes, I, I have looked at that maybe through like I, there's Thinkific and I think there's something else. And what I do like with my vision board workshops is I combine a vision board and a wheel of life and I color code the wheel of life. So I'm trying to figure out like the best way to, my tech is not always the greatest. I <laughs> found out already. So I'm trying to figure out a way to maybe do something through Thinkific or any other, I'm not sure all the other online course providers. So I'm doing research on that to do that because then set it up, have people go through that and then help them as they need it. Yes, ma'am. I'm not too familiar with the Thinkific. I'm not too familiar with that, but I am familiar with Udemy. I have uh, three of my online courses on Udemy and I have like over like 2,500 students like in, in each one of my courses. I'm also familiar with a company uh, and this company here is out of the uh, UK. It's called StudyPlex. And then with StudyPlex, you know, you put your course on there and then they'll, um, you know, help you get it distributed out to the world. Perfect. Perfect. Yes, I've heard of Udemy. Udemy Udemy, I'm not sure how exactly how you pronounce that. So we'll um, look up Udemy and see exactly how um, I can put my courses on there. Great, um, great offer for that. I think I totally forgot about Udemy. Yeah. Would you like me to show you how to put your course on there? Yeah, we can definitely do that. Sounds good. Yeah. Okay. Hold on one second. So now I'm going to share my screen with you here. Okay. I am not on camera on my side. I'm not sure what happened. So I'm trying to get going. I think you can see me, but I can't see you and I can't see myself. Oh, okay. Uh, let me see see here. I'm not sure what happened right here, Miss Bonnie, because see, like, yeah, I can see you really good, and you say that you can't see me, though, right? Right, and there's nothing on, I'm, uh, there's a blank screen in front of me on my side. Well, maybe what I can do, uh, maybe, like, after the show, I can uh, come back on, like, me and you just personally, and I can kind of show you how to get everything uploaded. But, um, but yes, ma'am, so that's that's what I actually personally recommend is to, you know, uh, upload your uh, courses on platforms like that, so that way you'll be able to get your uh, work distributed out to the world, 
because with the vision board, they have a lot of uh, demand for vision boards because a lot of people don't really know about those types of things. And my wife, she's really big into that also, Miss Bonnie. So I actually use the vision board to actually set my parent business up now because at first I wasn't using vision boards. Right. And then my wife was like, Tony, you ought to start using a vision board. And I was like, hmm. And then when I started doing it, it was like everything became aligned in my business. It was like things started connecting, like started getting plugged in. That would definitely do really good on um, Udemy and also on Steadyplex as well. So I think those two right there, Miss Bonnie, that'd be really good. Now, if you want to host your own course, and I've been this route also, you can use a um, company called Teachable. And then you have another one that's called Podia. And Podia is a real good one. And then you have Kajabi. But Kajabi is going to be more of like a higher tier price, right. meaning like about $250 a month. Uh, now, that's if you want to host your own online right. courses. But if you don't, then I would recommend it just, you know, you to me, or either you know, study place, one of those two. I want to start out kind of small first and do self-study, set it up myself, let people go through a self-study and then, you know, move to, you know, one-on-one and just kind of go like that. Kajabi, I have heard about Kajabi and I checked it out. They are a little bit more expensive and I will definitely look at Udemy um, the first and figure out exactly what I need. And I've made like live videos showing um, exactly what I'm talking about when I say um, I rank the um, different categories in the Wheel of Life. I, co- I color code it in and stuff so you can really tell exactly what I'm talking about when I when I say, hey, we color coded on a scale of one to 100, red, yellow, and green. And we see what parts you have to work on the most in your life. Anything I can do to, like I said, to help you right there, I would definitely do my best to help you out. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions that you have for me today, Miss Bonnie? Anything else I can help you with? No, I'm just trying to make sure that I have my, you know, ad copy set up to uh, help the people that I want to help. And, you know, like I said, my empower midlife women. And I just, you know, want people to live the life of their dreams. And I want them to say bon voyage to, you know, what, you know, what people have told them in the past. Maybe somebody told you when you were eight years old, oh, you can't sing, you can't dance. You don't want to get up and sing or dance. You don't want to sing a karaoke because you're told you were bad, but you might, may be really, really good at that. So I want people to not worry so much about what other people are thinking about them. And I want them to live the life that, you know, they want to live. It doesn't matter how old they are, how young they are. Live the life of your dreams. Live the life that you want to live and don't live the life that other people think that, you know, you should live. Don't worry about what's going on in your circumstances. If you have a lot of money, if you don't have a lot of money, if you have a family or if you're totally by yourself, just, you know, do what you want to do and work on your own self and make sure you are the best person you can be. You know, it's perfect timing for us to talk right now, Mr. Tony, we're just into January, just into 2024. So how, what can I do to help other people soar in 2024? Really good question. And that, that was amazing what you said right there, Miss Bonnie. Um, now, the best way to actually help people soar in 2024, I would recommend just with the course and then also, have you considered maybe starting your own group, like your own Facebook group? Have you considered anything like that? Um, no, I I have. I'm just starting up like a four month one on one coaching program, Phoenix Rising, Renew, Reset, Restore. So I'm getting that, and I do have you know my vision board workshop that I do, and I'm going to be doing power hour calls. And uh, I don't want to have too many offerings to so confuse people and confuse myself, but I also don't want to have this one you know high ticket offering because if people can't afford that then I have to have something more lower in my funnel to help them with until they're ready to move on to one-on-one four-month coaching program with me. Okay, so yes, ma'am. So that uh, four-month one-on-one coaching program, that's going to be your top tier right. program, right? Okay. Yep. Definitely do love for the power hour calls. Um, have, have you been doing a lot of those uh, this, this year so far? No, I haven't actually done any this year so far. I'm trying to get my ad copy exactly perfect. Um, I want to talk about, you know, mindset and I want to talk about what they need to do to, you know, to move the needle. And I understand that ad copy copy is really important. You know, what are you going to get out of the, the power hour call? So it's like, what do exactly do I want to talk about? Because I've seen people say, oh, we'll do a call. You can talk about whatever you want, but you got to have a specific topic to talk about. So people, you know, so you're not talking about any old, <laughs> you know, any old thing. So I want to talk about uh, mindset, mind, body, um, connection, um, empowerment, appreciation, gratitude, things like that. Okay. We can get started if you want to with the uh, ad copy. Now, um, you was wanting to know how to basically make your ad copy more so kind of like persuasive to kind of get them to take the next step in your business? Right. Well, I've done what I've done before is I've been kind of like too clinical and say, this is how you do this. 
and we're going to do this and that and the other. And I'm trying right now to get more on like stories, say meet so-and-so. When we first started talking, they were feeling this. So then I talked to them and we did two little changes. And now this is the way they're feeling, you know, by um, using cognitive behavioral therapy. Not really saying that way because people don't know what that is. But, you know, by using meditation, journaling, practicing gratitude, then they were able to, um, because I challenged people to, you know, name five things you're grateful for every day, to journal their feelings and to, you know, take deep breaths and be out in, in the sun. I know I meditate. So I'm just, sometimes I'm all over the place. I'm trying to do too many things. I got to keep staying focused on just one or two things and not be going everywhere. So that's that's one of my resolutions for this year is to stay the course and have my own little funnel going and not be trying to offer five or six different things. Like it gets too confusing for me and everybody else too. Yes, ma'am. I completely understand that because that was happening to me when I first started my business, Miss Bonnie. I had about 30 different funnels. Mm. I had you coming in from this way, that way. And I was like, oh my gosh, I was <laughs> like getting so burned out. Now, have you considered uh, now the clients that you've already helped, Miss Bonnie, have you considered having those good people give you reviews? And then that way, when you make your ad copy, you can say like, hey, I helped Tony Reed. And then this is Tony Reed's story. And then you can lead into that with your ad copy. Have you considered getting reviews from your clients? Yes, I've asked people and some of them are kind of being slow about doing testimonials. So I got to, you know, <laughs> ask them again. Like, yeah, great. I loved it. And this is how I felt when we were done. It's like, and, and some people, they don't mind giving reviews. They don't always like want to put their name out or do like a video and stuff like that. I'm like, I understand privacy. I don't, I don't even need to use, you know, your whole name. If your name is Elizabeth, I'll say Liz. There's thousands of Liz's out there. Nobody really knows who, what, what Liz I'm talking about. Some people just, you know, kind of shy about, about, you know, doing stuff. And some people don't mind. They'll do video testimonials. They'll do written testimonials. They'll do everything. So, and I know that it's good to have a variety of testimonials, you know, video with picture, with, with name, with what they do, where they're from. So I'm trying to have a, a variety so people can understand, hey, I'm in this position and Bonnie helped this person in this position. So maybe she can help me because I'm in that same position. One thing that actually helped me, because I'm going to be honest with you, Miss Bonnie, I'm always honest on my show here. When I first started my business, um, that was my thing. I was getting, trying to get people to give me reviews. And when I was, when I first got started, I was doing like customer service, mm -hmm. but the customer service, everything all basically revolves around mindset, because if your mindset isn't right, your customer service here is going to be garbage. Right. And so nobody really at the time was giving me a review. I would like send these intricate emails like, hey, please give me a review. Then what I started doing, Miss Bonnie, I was like, you know what? People like money. People like some kind of compensation. Mm -hmm. So what I started doing, if I send an email, I'm like, I'll give you a $10 Amazon gift card or either a $10 Starbucks gift card. Now that $10, that actually can go a long way in giving you a review back. And then that way you don't have to necessarily spend a lot of money on your Facebook ads also because you got genuine reviews from people right. who use your services. And don't even have to be 10. Maybe it could be five, just some kind of compensation to get them. And then on top of that, having real nice email copy, like real persuasive, like maybe the subject line and say something like, Tony, get your free $10 Amazon gift card. And then that's going to make me be in my email like, ooh, I shop on Amazon all the time. If you're ready to take your journey of mindset mastery to the next level and dive even deeper into mindfulness and also meditation, well, I've got a fantastic resource just for you. Inside, you're going to find step-by-step -step instructions, valuable insights, and also practical exercises to help you enhance your mindset and bring more positive changes to your life. Whether you're looking to conquer challenges, unleash your potential, or simply find more peace and balance throughout your daily life, this guide is the roadmap to success. To get your hands on this exclusive resource, all you need to do is click the link below in the description. I maybe would do something like that, Miss Bonnie. Yeah, that, that sounds really good. And I've seen people kind of give like, you know, little tips, you know, say, how did you feel beforehand? How did you feel afterwards? You know, things like that. Give them kind of like, not really a script, but give them like a direction on which way to respond to uh, your testimonial. So everybody understands, hey, if I hire her, she can help me do this. Something else that you can do now is writing this down here. You can make a uh, Google form. And then when you make your form, you can ask your questions. Kind of like the form for how I have for this podcast here. Then you can kind of, you know, ask the questions to your uh, clients. You can say, hey, what, what did you learn when you worked with me? How right. did you feel beforehand? And you can go and copy their exact words and then put that into your ad copy. Great idea, Tony. Thank you for that. So yeah, definitely yeah. use uh, that in my ad copy. I've seen a lot of people in ad copy say, this is for you if, this is not for you if, and make sure that they let people know exactly who the 
the best type of client would be. And also to say, you know, by doing this course with me or by being involved in this program, this is, you know, the outcome, you know, you're going to get, you're going to get more clarity on, on your life. You're going to decide exactly what you want to do to make you happy. So that's the type of things that I need to make sure that I have in my ad copy. So people read it, they're like, they think that I'm talking exactly to them. They're like, yes, I need this. Where's, where's the sign up form and the payment link? <laughs> well, let me sign up right now and do this with you, you know? I wish you could see my screen because I can share my ad copy with you on my website. What I can do so that way I can show the good people who's listening also and who's watching this right now. I'm going to share my screen here live. Would right. you mind on your laptop type in TonyReed.co? And that's also something I'm working on too is to get a website going in the next couple of days so I can have everything going with okay. that. I'm there. Success made simple. Yep. All right. Scroll down to where it says uh, the uh, Mindset Mastery Academy for me, please. I'm actually probably going to join that today or tomorrow. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. And <laughs> no then worries. and you see how when she first come on, says, you know, start a meaningful journey of self-discovery and change for only $7 per month. It's take control of your mindset and emotions. And it kind of goes through what you're getting inside of the academy right here. Right. And then you see I got your 10% yearly discount. People like discounts and things like that. They like a way how you can kind of intrigue them to want to actually join here. Right. If you scroll down to like the first pink section, you'll see like an emoji. The emoji is crying. It's right up underneath the price section. Is that still on the main page? Uh, Yes, ma'am. So okay. right where it says select your package now, mm -hmm. uh, scroll down underneath that and then you'll see like a little crying looking emoji. It says ever get advice that doesn't quite help. <laughs> yes, I get that a lot. <laughs> I get that a lot. <laughs> see like, so like imagine a new way, a life changing journey like a support system for your soul. These are going to be words that I actually got from people who I've actually helped in the past. So a lot of these keywords right here, like a support system for your soul, that's going to be things that my clients actually said. And then I just weaved it into my ad copy right here. And then if you scroll down a little bit more, because this is going to answer the question that you mentioned, like, who's this for? Now, scroll all the way down where it says uh, awesome extras. You'll see like the monthly hot seats underneath that one. Go down to the next section. It says, I have a question. And underneath that, it says, who is this for? Yes. So this for? that number one and number two, this is going to be how my ad copy is. This is how me and my team had it set up right here. Designed for those who want to grow and change. And talking right. about to those who are eager for a big shift in their lives because I notice a lot of people, Miss Bonnie, they, they really need help in their lives. And a lot of people, sometimes they may not necessarily want to, you know, admit it. But see, in the academy right here, everything is all right because, you know, we're all, you know, going through certain things in life here. So that's why we wrote the ad copy like that, using the words and the, the resolution that you're going to get right. from joining the academy. Oh, yes, definitely. Um, I, like, I like your ad copy. I'm going to have to really study your ad copy good and, and and take the, the best parts of it and put towards, you know, the, the best way to be on, on my own, things like that. So, yes, very good. And then you also said that you want to talk about how to structure your copy. Yeah, I've, I've seen people, I mean, it used to be like bro marketing where they kind of uh, stirred the pot a little bit. Like, are you feeling this way? Do you want this, this, that, and the other? And it's like, you know, are you feeling bad every day? Do you have low self-esteem? Do you have no self-discipline? It's like, no, that's not the kind of ad copy I want. I want to, you know, I kind of want to be a little more positive. It's like, do you want to go, you know, from this to this? And I don't want to like agitate people and stuff. It's like, you know, are you kind of, you know, are you feeling this way? Just just kind of going into, you know, like we talked about before with, with stories. I, you know, I met this person and we talked and, you know, we did this and then they, that's the way they were feeling. So that's, that's kind of like the ad copy I want since I mainly work with women. I've worked with plenty of men before. I actually had a call with a man recently about relationships. So that was, that was a pretty interesting call because I'm not even in a relationship, but I was given a relationship advice. So that was really interesting. That was cool. I like that though. Kind of like with my, um, my program, my Phoenix Rising, Renew, Reset, Restore, you know, Restore Your Soul, Renew your life and just, you know, get back to how you want to be and don't let what other people are saying to you defeat you and bring you down. You know, people are judging everybody all the time. People are bullying other people and think they're better than others and stuff. And it's like, you know, bring yourself back up to your highest capacity and, you know, work on work on yourself and just let other people be the way that they want to be. And just, you know, you do you and you make sure that you are working at your highest capacity. And you, if you have goals, I mean, I use, I like to use my mom as an example 
My mom is a great grandmother in her mid eighties. And to be honest with you, I don't even know where she is right now because she and her boyfriend have an RV and they travel around the United States and Canada and they visit like all the national parks. They visited the presidential museums and, you know, she's living her best life. And that's the type of life I want people to live. And I want to live that life. And I'm very soon going to be a digital nomad and traveling around seeing hotels, hostels, Airbnbs and two weeks, two months at a time and just kind of doing what I want to do and helping other people along the way and being motivational, inspirational speaker and just help other people as much as I can. I love that. And see, uh, that's what my grandparents, that's what they done and whatnot. They uh, always traveled around, like you said, to Canada, New York, and they didn't have an RV, but they have a Lincoln Town car. Oh, yeah. and whatnot, and they would just always cruise around. And I always admired that. When Before I got married, I was like, you know what? That's going to be one thing in my marriage that I'm going to make sure that I do mm-hmm. with my wife. I'm always going to travel with my wife. And that's what we do. We go like to Las Vegas and we travel around and yeah. We, yeah, we love living life, Miss Bonnie, and everything. Yeah. And so, like you said, more people do need to live their best life like that. Because a lot of people I notice, they're really scared to live their best life because I notice a lot of people, they think they're going to offend somebody if they're living their best life. So, for example, like I know when me and my wife, when we first got married, we had purchased a brand new home. So we had a housewoman party. And then some people came to our house and they was crying because our house, you know, nice and stuff like that. They could have a nice house also, but they just didn't want to have that particular type of nice house and everything. And then, so, you know, it was kind of like, are we wrong for having a house of th- th- this size of this magnitude that looks like this when other people have this? So me and my wife, we started kind of feeling like we was a little wrong because people tried to make us feel wrong. But then we was like, hold on, we worked hard for this. Like we did what we need to do in life and we are living our best life. So we're not going to feel wrong for living our best life because those good people didn't want to live their best lives. Tony, uh, I totally... Uh, agree and people don't want to do they don't want to buy a big house or buy a nice car or go on a nice vacation because they think you know what are people going to say about them and i've done uh, money mindset challenges and stuff and it's like you know you do what you do to make your money and you can spend it any way you want as long as you're not doing anything illegal immoral or unethical a lot of people feel um like downtrodden and being down by society and they're just hiding in the corner they're afraid to say or do anything and it's like no get out and do what you want to do you can you know change so many people's lives you know challenge people every day to to, you know, na- name five things you're grateful for. To acknowledge at least five people. To compliment people. One little simple thing. Smile at somebody. Say, hey, I like your earrings or those shoes are awesome and stuff. And that makes people smile and think about stuff. So just, you know, don't be invisible. Don't bully other people. Don't think you're better than other people because, you know, they don't have a house big as yours or they don't have a, as much money as you. And some people can make do on a lot less money. And I personally don't need something really big. I'm happy to just, you know, stay in Airbnb for a couple of weeks and, and meet new people and stuff like that so i don't whatever makes people happy makes them happy and let, let people live their life and just you be happy on your end and you let other people be happy on their end and the whole world's going to be a much better place in my opinion i completely agree miss money e- even like my whole life see i'm the 10th generation barber in my family so when i was coming up miss Bonnie, all i heard was man all you're going to be is just a barber your whole mm-hmm. life you're just going to be behind a chair buzz and cuts all day your whole life mm-hmm. and then when i got about by 31 and 32 i wound up leaving tennessee see and mm-hmm. pursuing my screenwriting dreams. I was like, hold on, I'm not just going to just be subjected to be a barber just because this is what you say I'm going to be. I'm going to go be what I want to be. I'm going to be what Tony wants to be. And then me and my wife moved away and we went out to California. I was writing movies and stuff like that. And I was like, okay, I'm actually going to live my dreams. I wasn't scared to take that next step that, to that take that next leap and regardless of what people thought or what they said about me, Miss Bonnie, because a lot of people wore me out. They was yeah. like, oh, Tony, you think you're better than us. Oh, you out there in California. We we're seeing Tennessee and this. I'm like, no, 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 it's not that. I'm just pursuing my life, guys. I'm pursuing my dreams, the things that I want to do in my life. I'm going to get it. I'm not waiting for it to come to me because I noticed that, Miss Bonnie, a lot of people wait for things to come to them. I'm the kind of guy I go and get things. And when my friends would see me go and get things, they would be like, Tony, man, you wrong. You must have robbed somebody. You must be selling cocaine or something like that. How in the world did you, you know, get this and, and everything? I'm like, well, I didn't sell cocaine. I didn't <laughs> rob anybody. That's not me. I'm like, but I went and worked for it. I worked smart for it and I put dedication and time and effort into getting what I want. Yeah, definitely. And congratulations on doing what you want. And that's why people are scared to do anything because if people are going to judge them, they might lose friends. But in my opinion, if people don't want to be your friend because you're trying to uplevel yourself, then they might not have been, you know, your friend in the first place. People should want you to do good and people should, you know, be your biggest cheerleader and just, you know, do what you want to do that makes you you happy and if people don't 
like it, then there's really nothing you can do. You're making yourself and your family happy and you're living the life that you want. You know, you want the best for your, your future generations and if people really your friend and they really want to support and encourage you, they need to let you do, you know, what you want as long as it makes you happy and, and your wife happy and that's the most important thing. So kudos to you to just say, hey, I'm, I'm doing this and um, if you never take a chance, you're never going to know what's going to happen. What's the worst that could happen if you don't do it? You're going to be in the same spot right now. I ask people, you know, how was your 2023? How did you want that to go for you? Are you at the end of 2023, is that the same as 2022? Is that the same as 2021? How do you want your 2024 to be? You need to take the bull by the horns and go out and do stuff on your own and not wait for stuff to come to you and not wait for other people to come and, and help you and save you. People will help you more when they see that you're doing something on your own to improve yourself. And people will end up coming around and saying, hey, congratulations. I'm sorry. I didn't believe in you. Uh, we're, we're friends now, right? We're, we're, we're okay together, you know? That's how, that's how I look at it, right? We're so <laughs> yes, <ma 'am. laughs> so, yeah. And then that's going to be the perfect segue right there, Miss Bonnie, to lead into the other topic you want to talk about was mindset. Now, yes. what do you want to talk about with mindset? I actually am really good at, at mindset. And I made this meme for mindset using the first letters of the word mindset. Mindset is knowledge during setbacks. Everything is terrific. So again, that's mindset is knowledge during setbacks. Everything is terrific. And I, I thank you. And I try to show people how to make the best of a bad situation situation, how to just, you know, stay positive, you know, reframe your negatives into positives. Things might not always be great for you, but, you know, be grateful that you woke up this morning. How many people didn't wake up this morning? You know, even if you woke up on a concrete bench or if you woke up, you know, on, on the ground, or if you woke up in a, you know, in, in a nice house on a mattress, you still woke up this morning. So I like to encourage people to really to master their mindset, you know, master your mindset, master your life. Because if you're sitting in the corner all the time crying, poor, poor, pitiful me, I need this, I need that. People aren't going to want to help you. They're not going to want to be your friend. And then you're going to be crying. I don't have any friends. <laughs> you know, so it's a self, it's a self fulfilling prophecy, right, Mr. Tony? I mean, yes. you got to reach out and be happy and say hi to people every day. All you got to do is say, hey, how you doing? You know, greet people. I mean, I have some people that I say, you know, you're in charge of telling me what day it is because I sometimes have no clue what day it is. I'll say, you know, I say happy Thursday. They're like, Bonnie, it's Tuesday. I'm like, okay, you know, somebody called me on Christmas. Day and I answered the phone, you know, happy Thanksgiving. So I have no clue what day it is 95% of the time. And I'm like, I know it's 2024 right now. But, you know, but I joke around with people and, they, and then and then they like that because, you know, you just never say anything to anybody who's like, hi, what's up? You know, people can kind of hear and, and see, you know, how you're acting. So I want to like leave people better when I leave them than how I found them. And I'm always looking to partner up with people who are helping others with their mindset, helping others to live, live their dream life life helping others with their passion and I'm always saying well what do you do to help other people with their mindset so that I can get new ideas to help to help the people that I can help you know master their mindset I definitely would not mind maybe like collaborating with you like you know since we're both on mindset because you know I already have like you know, like a dedicated audience so maybe you right. and I can maybe like hook up and we can do some like a collaboration so that way you know we can help accelerate each other's mindset business sounds great we'll definitely get get going on that and and, you know, the Tony and Bonnie show is coming up pretty soon, right? Yes, ma'am, definitely. A lot of people don't know this about me, but I just want it better for my own self and everything like that. Not what people assumed was right for me. I wanted what's best for myself. And so that's when I really got deep into mindset right there. I really got into like meditation journaling because that's one thing that I do every day, Miss Bonnie. I mm -hmm. journal for uh, at least 10 minutes a day. So when I wake up, I meditate for one hour. And then I tell my wife, I'm like, baby, look, unless the house is on fire, unless the burglar is coming in, like, please let me, you know, be in my meditative state for this this one hour. And then once I get done, I come, you know, kiss you and tell you good morning and things like that. Because the first thing I do, Miss Bonnie, I always get myself together because like on the airplane, they always say in the event of an airplane crash, please put your oxygen mask on first. They don't say put it on the baby first. They say okay. put it on you first. And so I have to get my mindset together. And then I notice when I have my mindset together, 
other things in my life kind of come together like clinkle blocks because I have put my mindset in check. And that's one thing I learned from years ago. So, so from 18 years old to 38 now, you know, I do this same thing every day. And I, I used to do it on like actual pencil and paper, but I started wasting too much paper. So <laughs> now I do everything digitally. When you said mindset, I was like, ooh, I got to definitely talk about that a little bit because, yeah, you have to get your mindset together. Yes. And that is really great that you do all that already, Mr. Tony. And I actually have a five by five formula to a rock solid day. And it's five activities you can do from one to five minutes each in the morning to start your day off strong. And it includes meditation, journaling, practicing gratitude, deep breathing and grounding yourself. And the reason I say is like from one to five minutes a day is because people are so busy and they don't have a lot of time to, to do that. But you could definitely do this longer. And I say, when you get up, be grateful that you got up. Name a couple things you're grateful for. Journal, how was your night last night? Did you sleep really good? If you remember your dream, write your dreams down. You can journal like too. How how did your day go? You know, if stuff didn't go too good, what can you do to change it for the next time? And, you know, being out in, in the fresh air, you know, grounding yourself, standing with your bare feet in the grass or in the in the dirt and just reaching up and don't want to look directly at the sun because I don't want you to go blind, obviously. But, you know, stretch yourself out, reach towards the sun, you know, and take five deep breaths in through the nose, hold it for a few seconds and out through the mouth. And that's going to totally relax you when you do that. And it's like, yes, I'm ready to, to totally start the day and let's get rocking and rolling. And like you say, get your mind right with everything, get your mind and your whole mind body connection, your mind body connected, get it all right. And then you can start your day and you're like, yes, let's have a really great day. And let's just be rock solid all day today and be positive. That's lovely because people need that. People need that right. in their life. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So yeah, definitely. Once the show is over, I would like for you to kind of hang on the line a little bit. Yeah. That way we can, you know, get some stuff talked about here, Miss Bonnie. Yes, ma'am. Definitely, definitely. And then you also had on here if you wanted to talk about uh the uh, mind body connection. Right, the mind body connection, because um people don't realize how it's all connected. And what I've noticed personally, and once I start talking to this with people, they notice it themselves. You're like, you know, if you're really, really tired, that's gonna, you know, that's in your mind, but it's also in your body, and that's going to you know affect you you're going to be sitting down like slumped over or you're gonna you know not be standing up totally straight and you're gonna feel it you know all over so you know, I tell people, you know, if you get up, if you're in a bad mood, you're kind of depressed or whatever, try to do something that's going to make you feel better, no matter what it is. You know, go online, you know, and look at some kitten videos. I mean, that, I love doing that. And that makes me smile and laugh. And then, then I'm in a much better mood because, like, you know, a lot of people, are, depending on how old you are, you might, you know, be in a lot of pain from arthritis or stuff like that. So if you're in a lot of pain, it's hard sometimes to, you know, be positive and, and be happy and stuff and just try to see if you're in a certain position positions that cause you pain to try to, you know, switch around. I know for myself, I have osteoarthritis in both of my knees. So, you know, I have trouble with, you know, mobility sometimes. So I try to make sure I'm sitting in a, in a way that doesn't hurt my knees as much because I start walking weird to help my knees and then it hurts my back and then it hurts my hips and then it hurts my neck and then everything hurts. So I don't know what hurts the most. So I was like, let's just try to lay totally flat on the ground and don't move a muscle for a minute. And we'll see if that helps. I'm, I'm not sure what's going on. Just, you know, because if you're in a lot of pain and then I've seen people be in pain and that affects their their mental like they're, they're angry they're upset and they're taking that on other people because they're in pain and it's like I'm sorry you're in pain however that's not my fault so don't be snipping at me because I didn't do anything to put you in pain I like to use humor in a lot of stuff where you're trying to be kind of stern with somebody but you use humor because you don't want to just be telling people you need to do this you have to do this because people don't like that and I don't like that when people tell me that so it's like why don't we try it this way why don't we kind of go the, this round and you know, go go around from the backside and, and do it this way. And because, you know, see, you know, you laughed and now, now you feel a little bit better because because you're laughing. So like, OK, nothing hurts now. I'm good. Let's let's go run the marathon. They just did the Walt Disney World Marathon this weekend. And I'm like, man, if I try to run that marathon, I think the Easter Bunny would find me in a couple months. I, think, <laughs> you know, I, can do that. I love you now when you can run the marathon, but I, I can't do that. But see how many times you laughed during this call already, Mr. Tony? So yes, it's man. like I try to I try to be serious, but be serious in a humorous way where people People can kind of come at it from a different viewpoint. Be like, oh, you know, things really aren't that bad. When you go online and you see how some people are living, you know, in the United States and in other countries where they're actually their floor is, is dirt. And, you know, you're complaining about your mattress is hard. Well, this person is sleeping in dirt. So you're, you're, you're going to be okay. <laughs> you know, don't, don't be complaining too much because if you complain too much, my mom used to say at night, 
when I was growing up, my mom said, you know, if you've been crying about something, I'm going to give you something to cry about. So appreciate what you do have, but don't dwell on what you don't have and realize that no matter how bad it is for you, there are people that have it worse. So just, you know, be, be cool with what you have and, and you'll, you'll keep getting more. And I, and I see people, they bully other people and then people say, oh, well, hurt people, hurt people. But just because, you know, you're being a, a poopy head doesn't mean you can take that out on me. Unless I did something to you, made you upset, then don't be being rude to me because I'm not, I didn't, do, I didn't have anything to do with it. So don't be bu- bullying other people because you feel bad because, you know, there's people that are right now, everything that's going on in the world, totally on the brink of being really bad and sad and stuff. And you could be the person that pushes them over the edge the wrong way. And I would, I don't want to be anywhere near or know anybody that's going to be, you know, bullying and pushing other people away and making other people feel bad about themselves. You know, if you feel that bad about yourself, go off in the corner and maybe by yourself for a while, you know, talk to somebody, get some help, but don't be taking your stuff out on other people who had nothing to do with it. Like you said, you people have done what they've done and they have to reap their, their consequences, but don't be acting crazy to somebody else because you don't know what other people are going through. I don't want to be the last person that, that saw somebody that was mean to them and then something happened and we know what I'm talking about. So it's like, just be cool to other people because you could be the person to save somebody. You could be the person that brings somebody off of, off of the cliff and now they're, you know, in a much better place because you were nice to them. You didn't ignore them like everybody else did. So it's like, you need to be cool to other people just because, you know, that's that's the way the world should work, <laughs> you know? And I know it's kind of, you know, that old saying, I just want everybody to be happy. But when people are happy and having a good time, everything is so much better. And that's really just what I want is for people to be, you know, and try to encourage people all the time and just, you know, say, say thank you. I appreciate what you did for me, even if it's their job to do something. Just say thank you because I see a lot of workers out there. Nobody appreciates them. People are always complaining and it's, you know, it's their job to clean up after me. Well, it may be, but you can make it nicer for them, you know, give them a tip and make it easy. So just think of how other people are feeling and, you know, try to make the world a better place and leave people smiling and say, hey, I want to see them come back in here. Because you don't want to walk into a place people like, oh my gosh, there's Bonnie. She's going to be complaining about something. Tell her to go away, you know. I want to walk in a place, hey, Bonnie, what's going on? Happy, you know, happy whatever day today is or, you know, hope you're, hope you're warm enough and stuff like that, you know, because I don't want to go any place that people dread me coming in because of that. Because eventually they're going to say, we can't make you happy here. You need to go someplace else. That's like when I had, when I had stopped writing movies, I had to have some kind of job. I started working at an exotic car dealership and as a, as a car salesman, you want to know, Miss Bonnie, I'm going to be honest with you. The first person who I walked in and who I became friends with was the custodian. I didn't go in and try to be friends with the manager, the, the, the GM, and the right. sales manager. I didn't know. I wanted to be friends with the custodial agents because they were the ones who were making the dealership look nice. They were the right. ones who was, you know, getting everything set up. Then I started, you know, having a relationship with like the secretaries. And then I started talking to the management team and stuff like that, because these are going to be the good people who are working really, really hard. So I always would thank the custodian for their work that they would do when keeping the place clean, even though it wasn't my company, even though it was, but I still made them feel like a top tier player because I would always talk to them because they would say, Tony, why are you talking to me? I'm like, well, you know, I, I like talking to everybody, you know, just because you're the janitor or custodian, that doesn't mean that you're not a person. You still need to be talked to like a normal person. You don't have to eat your lunch over here and all the salesmen eating their lunch over here. Nah, come over here with us and eat with us. You know, we're all together. We're all one team. And so that's one thing that people always have liked about me. They were like, oh, Tony, like you made us feel so good, so inclusive. You know, without them, what would the place look like? You know, and then, you know, other people sometimes they think, oh, I'm too good to do something like that. I've been in places where the, the manager and even the supervisor, you know, uh, cleaning up underneath the tables or they're sweeping, you know, they're mopping and doing stuff like that. And I watch when, I'm, when I see people, I watch how they treat everybody from lowest person on a totem pole, so to speak, up to the highest person. You're going to treat somebody bad. I don't really want to be around you. You know, you'd be nice to the people who are waiting on you. Be nice to the bus drivers. Be nice to cleaning people. Be nice to the doctors. Be nice to the lawyers. Be nice to the receptionists. Just be nice to everybody. Everybody's got a job and they need to be respected. There's there's some some jobs that some people who are like, you know, sanitation workers, they make more than some lawyers. But the sanitation workers, you're, you're going to be in trouble when you're throwing your trash away. They don't take it away. Like Now you're, now you're going to appreciate them when you don't have them. So appreciate them when you do have them and they'll stay with you forever and ever, you know? This has been a great conversation. If my audience here wants to learn more about Miss Bonnie, how can they reach out to you? You can find me on Facebook at Bonnie S. Hardy at B-O-N-N-I-E-S-H-A-R-D-I-E or you can 
send me an email at bonniehardy at yahoo.com. That's B-O-N-N-I-E-H-A-R-D-I-E at yahoo.com. Tell me, you, you know, I saw me on the Tony show and tell me how I can help you with mastering your mindset, how I can help you with getting on podcasts, how I can help you to be a better person, how I can help you to create a vision for your life, how I can help you with anything that you want. And I'll see what I can do to help you. Perfect. Thank you so much, Miss Bonnie. Until next time, I'll catch you later.